Okay, so chapter two, the reign of Christ. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Isaiah 61, 1. <clears throat> One of my notes here on uh, page 18, if our liberty in Christ is going to be a reality in life, we're going to have to learn to walk in the freedom of Christ, independent of everyone else we know. So even though we have may have friends that believe the same way we do or not, we need to realize our walk is independent of our husbands, of our kids, of our friendships, of our church, of our pastor, of our ministry. I mean, we, it is us, you and God. So. That's something to be thankful for. Really. Yeah, it's true. Because there's people I wouldn't want to be in that complete mess to be honest with you. And they don't have grace <laughs> to deal with us. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, I'm just, I got my little notebook here, and this was interesting to me. It doesn't matter who you are. This is talking about the king. Yeah. Like they all came along. The best were not perfect. The most honorable weren't holy. Mm -hmm. Not even the most humble were immune to pride. Isn't that fun thing I told you? No, I'm just kidding. No, it feels that way. <laughs> but we have to remember the scripture of what the Lord yes. came to do for us and, and is still doing and capable of doing today. No earthly leader is incapable of misleading. That is, boy, do we have to keep that in our minds. We cannot look to man ever and think that he won't or cannot or is incapable of failing. Yeah, that's right. We are all capable. going to fail, yeah. period. We live in a fallen world. We are human beings in a human body. We are not up in heaven with God yet, and we are going to fail. So you cannot put anybody up higher because we're all the same. We may have different roles and we may have different things that we do in life that God has called us to, but we are none less important than the other or more important than the other mm -hmm. to God. And then that should be to ourselves, each other too. Um, let's see. Well, this is very... This is the thing that will, for me, because I do need to oppose here on this, but, mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, he cares more for our freedom than we do. That's true. It's because we're ignoring the fact we need to be freed up of something the majority of the time. And he, he, but he keeps dealing with us. He, he has a remedy, and he is the meter of our needs. Mm -hmm. You know, if we just really believe that, as long as the sun comes up in the morning, God will keep offering to deliver his children. Wow. Well, now that's for us. Keep offering. He's not going to make us, but he's going to keep every day. His mercies are new every morning. And how, I mean, not, no one I know, even myself, uh, has ever been willing to do that for somebody. No. Nope. Which we're not God. But, I mean, it just baffles me. When one person does something wrong to me, I don't even want to ever speak to them. I mean, that's my bad part. <laughs> I don't follow through with that, but that's how I feel. Surely not going to give them any mercy every day while we're supposed to. So I'm just being trying to I stand on the good side. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. Um, uh, oh, I was just going to highlight these last. Um, this last chapter where she talks it number one god hears the cry of the oppressed mm -hmm. so when you are feeling oppressed even through this um, study and you're feeling like it's too much to handle or or maybe you're feeling like you're not hearing enough or whatever when you're feeling that pressure when, when you're feeling oppressed cry out to god you know he will hear you and he um and he he'll respond to you and listen Listen to what he's trying to say to you through, it Whatever. could be anything. It could be a show on TV. It could be, a, I don't know, it could be anything. Don't look for some grandiose thing. Right. Just look at the little things and say, hey, I'm thinking this. Maybe that thought was from God. You know, and it's dealing directly with what you're dealing with. It is. Mm -hmm. And then number two, God fulfills um, 
Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, in Christ alone. He sent Christ, and through Christ alone he is fulfilled. And that, and with Christ in us, he can fulfill that in us. And I think that's awesome. Amen. And um, also just highlighting in Corinthians 3.17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I love that song. Me too. Let's sing. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Freedom is (laughs) This is a musical. (laughs) No. uh, (laughs) But I do remember that. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. You stay in the presence of God. Stay in the Spirit. And you will have freedom. It's a promise. Depend on that Corinthians 317. Oh, oh, yes, second. Just sorry, the second highlighted. But, um, thank you, Melissa. (laughs) Number three is Christ's ministry is a ministry of the heart. God is not a cruel God, He is a loving God. He loves us, He, um, He does reprimand us. I mean, sometimes it doesn't feel good, but it's always for our benefit and not a blessing. And we need to remember that and how we deal with people. To, to move in love and Amen. to say things through love and to the best of our ability. <laughs> and if, you know, you have a so hard time... making a way out there. No, I mean, sometimes yeah. we're going to fail and you need to yeah. be willing to even yeah. admit it, you know, say, you know, I failed. I yeah. did not yeah. love you through this, but I'm trying. I'm going to do, I'm going to try again. Don't give up on loving and acting in love and living your life that way. Um... So that's it. So Christ um, came to set the captives free no matter what kind of yoke binds them. He came to bind up the brokenhearted no matter what broke the heart. He came to open the eyes of the blind no matter what veiled their vision. So <clears throat> my prayer is, our prayer I always say, is for God to reveal truth to you that you'd be open to hearing what that truth is and seeing it. So that you can, so that we can all grow um, more in Christ and not live in deception and to live in freedom and, and not to live in captivity. So this is, um, so this is a little long because we went through the introduction, chapter one and chapter two. And so next Monday, I don't know what the date is. Next Monday, but we it's a will. Today, so seven days from the sixth. The thirteenth. <laughs> Yeah, oh, we were saying today, yeah, the 13th, the 13th, um, Monday the 13th, we'll do chapters 3 and 4. Mm-hmm, it's still okay to do two chapters? Yeah, but I think so, because we can even today. do two parts. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll do, if we'll continue to do any, two chapters. If they have any, uh, you know, uh, oh, comments. Or recommendations or something. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, if you felt like it was we a lot, if you would rather we focused, no. like, just on one chapter at a time, totally cool with that. Just let us know. If you don't say anything, then we're just going to keep it up with two chapters a week. <laughs> Is that loving enough? No. <laughs> That's very loving. <laughs> okay. So, let's wrap this up with, like, in the actor studio or something. Let's ask you a question. <laughs> This is the part we will delete. No. Okay, go on. It's the only part we're keeping. <laughs> what? Let's see here. Let me think. Um, I should have thought of this beforehand. Yeah. Well, Let's I see. What What do you guys want to know? Okay. What, what is your favorite color? Green. I already knew that. Okay. Let's do another one. What is... <laughs> What, hey, if you guys want to any, ask us any questions, we'll do this at the end. She'll ask me a question, and I'll ask her a question. How about that? And if you don't want to know, we're just going to tell you anyway. <laughs> what is your favorite part of Hanford? Oh. Since you moved here. Okay. My favorite part of Hanford since I moved here is the tree out in front of my beautiful heart-shaped window. Because I love birds, and I've got my hummingbird feeder out there, I've got a regular bird feed, I've got a bird bath. Watching those birds is, they're the cutest thing. I love it. And they can actually fly around here and not feel threatened by whatever. Bye-bye. Okay, ask me something now. Oh my gosh. 
and she does it. She's like her father. She doesn't prepare me. We get up on the platform, hey. and he just starts throwing the That's guitar. the best. That's the best kind, right? That's the best. Best part. That's the best way to do it. Mother, come on. <laughs> what is your favorite worship song? What comes to mind? Well, this <laughs> song we're just talking about so we can hear where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Um, she is one of our fantastic worship leaders at Trinity. Oh. And so she should be able to take a week off. Well, I do love that I'm song. I, <laughs> um, I love, maybe it'd be easier to say type of worship. Okay, what type? She's going to tell me what to ask her. What type of worship song do you like? Worship Lord. Sorry, <laughs> maybe. Um, I like declarations. I like when we are singing and declaring something about the Lord, which is a, a lot why those types of songs are my favorite. Like the, where the freedom of the Lord is, I mean, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, which is so true. And I feel like you're getting these truths out and these declarations out um, to the congregation so that they can do what we're talking about. They can use them in their own life um, day to day. And so. I don't know how to. Well, I'm going to prepare better next time. Okay. Well. 